how to find horizontal asymptote of rational functions. I have been repeatedly asked this question and it seems that it is a very important issue to discuss. So here is it. Here it is. So as you know, a rational function is basically a ratio of two polynomial functions, right? So we can have a polynomial in the numerator and another polynomial in the denominator. The only condition here is that the denominator cannot be zero since you cannot divide by zero. So that's what a rational function is. And now let's understand what is horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is something like this. We are trying to figure out as what happens when we approach when x approaches a very large negative or positive value. So basically I can write like this. If x approaches let's say negative infinity then what happens to f of x or the y value? So if x approaches negative infinity and f of x or y approaches some fixed value let us say a then we say that a horizontal asymptote exists. Similarly, if x approaches a large positive value, which we can write as like infinite, and the value of the function, that is f of x, approaches some fixed value, let me write b. At times, it can be different from a. Most of the time, it is same as a, right? So but just as a, as a general case, it's better to take two different values, okay? But either one could be true. What I'm trying to say here is that if x approaches a large value, negative or positive, and if f of x approaches a fixed value, not large value like this, then the horizontal asymptote exists. So then we have an horizontal asymptote. And the equation of horizontal asymptote is y equals to this value. The value to which function approaches. So if function approaches a, then the equation of horizontal asymptote will be y equals to a. If the function approaches b, then the equation will be y equals to b. Correct? As I said, most of the time, the function approaches from both the sides, same value, okay? It may approach from positive side or negative side, as you see in 1 over x, correct? Let me give you an example here, a very simple example. Let's say 1 over x. That's the basic rational function, correct? So 1 over x, how does it approach? Do you see, when you are approaching positive infinity, f of x approaches 0 but from positive side. When you approach negative infinity, then f of x approaches 0 from negative side. Well, both cases you are approaching 0. But in one case, you are approaching from positive side and in the other case, you are approaching from the negative side. Okay. So that's how it is. So well, in this case, what is the equation of horizontal asymptote? The equation of horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0, correct? Since this is your horizontal asymptote. Because your function is trying to approach y equals to 0. Maybe from positive side or negative side. I hope you understand that part, correct? So. One thing is clear. If we are talking about horizontal asymptote, then we are looking for behavior of function as x approaches positive or negative infinity. In short, the end behavior of our rational function. Okay. So let me summarize this here as a very familiar term to you. And that I will say end behavior. Is it okay? 
So you have to see the end behavior. If x approaches positive infinity, what happens to f of x? Similarly, if x approaches negative infinity, what happens to f of x? If f of x also approaches positive or negative infinity, then there is no horizontal asymptote. But if f of x approaches a fixed value, let us say capital L, then horizontal S, then y will be equals to L. Okay, this is in general I am writing. If x approaches positive or negative infinity and y approaches L, then the horizontal asymptote will be y equals to capital L. Okay, the fixed value which function approaches. Correct. Now, I have taken three examples here in the form of questions. These are the typical three for the scenario. Now, as I said, a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials. Let's call the numerator one as n of x and denominator of d of x. Okay. Now, a polynomial, you know, has a degree. Degree of the polynomial is the highest degree of the term, right? You have to check the exponents, right? For example, in question 1, f of x equals to 3x to the power of 4 plus 2x square minus 5x plus 1 divided by 5x square minus x minus 2. Now here, what is the degree of numerator? Degree is 4, correct? And the leading coefficient is 3, correct? Degree of denominator is 2. So we see in this case, degree of numerator is higher than degree of denominator. Correct? Now, to do these questions, I will like to make one assumption. And that is, let degree of numerator be n. So what we are taking is, because degree will really tell us a lot of details about horizontal asymptotes. So we say let degree of numerator be n and degree of denominator be m. Correct? Now, this particular scenario is when n is greater than m. You see, what is the numerator degree? 4 and denominator 2. So 4 is greater than 2. So this is case 1 where degree of numerator is higher than degree of denominator. So in such cases, what happens? We will see that part. Now I'll show you how to solve and get a result. So what we will do here is that we will take in the denominator, we have got x square. So from the numerator, we'll factor out x square. So if you factor out x square, let me do it here itself. Then we get x square outside and we are left with 3x square plus 2 minus 5 over x plus 1 over x square. Correct? That's the numerator. And in the denominator, I will have x square. So I get 5 here minus 1 over x, x divided by x square, right? 1 over x minus 2 over x square. That is what I get, right? Now, I can cancel x squares. These are the common factors, correct? I'm left with 3x square plus 2 minus 5 over x plus 1 over x square divided by 5 minus 1 over x minus 2 over x square. Now, think like this. If x is very large, let's say 1000, then 2 over 1000 square will be very, very small. Similarly, 1 over 1000 is very small as compared to 5, right? Therefore, I can write my denominator as just 5, correct? How about the numerator? Here also, 1 over x is very, very small. 5 over x is also very small, correct? So I can neglect these two terms because they are very small, negligible, as compared to 2 or 3x square, right? So I'll write numerator as 3x square plus 2. Correct? So 
I'm right writing approximately because these are negligible, but still they are there, right? Now imagine what happens if x is very large. Does this approach a fixed number? No, it doesn't. If x is large, if x is large, maybe positive infinity or negative infinity? Y is also large. Do you understand? Y is also large. But in either case, Y is going to positive infinity. Do you see that? Because X is large, Y is going to be very, very large. So in this particular case, we have no horizontal asymptote. We have no horizontal asymptote, right? So whenever you will see the numerator degree is higher, as in this case, than the denominator degree, then you will not have any horizontal asymptote. Since as x approaches a large value, y also approaches a large value, not a fixed value. Okay. Now let's take question number two. In question number two, as you can see, the degree of numerator we say is let it be n and degree of denominator is m. But here you see degrees are same, n equals to n. Both are three. Do you see that? Both are three in this particular case. So this is a case where degree of numerator and denominator are same. Let's try to solve this question. So we can write here, we'll do the same strategy. And the strategy is factor out x cube. So we'll factor out x cube. If you factor out x cube, you're left with 2 plus x squared divided by x cube is 1 over x minus 1 over x cube, right? And in the denominator, you get x cube. You're left with 3 here. And you're left with minus 1 over x square, right? x divided by x cube minus 2 over x cube, correct? Now, you can cancel out x cube, right? So once you are cancelling x cube, then you see the rest of the terms. This is very small, right? When x is very, very large, let's say 1000, then this is 1 over million, right? Very small. These two can be neglected. This is also small and that is also small. So 1 over a large value is very small value, correct? Right? Therefore, what are you left with? You are left with 2 over 3. So this is equals to 2 over 3. So what you see here is that if x approaches a large value, maybe positive infinity or negative infinity, y is approaching a fixed value, which is 2 over 3. Do you see? y approaches a fixed value, 2 over 3. Therefore, we say that a horizontal asymptote exists and the equation of horizontal as asymptote is, exists and the equation is y equals to 2 over 3. So, this is the value which the function approaches, correct? Now, as you will notice here, something special. What is 2 and 3? 2 over 3. Do you see this number 2 over 3? Let me mark it with a different ink. 2 over 3. 2 over 3 is the ratio of leading coefficients. So you will find that whenever the degree of numerator and denominator is same, then equation of horizontal asymptote is ratio of the leading coefficients. Correct? 2 over 3. That's what you'll get. Always. Okay, there is no exception to this rule. Now, let's take the third case. Well, by now you must have understood. In the third case, we are looking for degree of numerator as 2 and denominator degree as 3. So here, degree of numerator is less than that of denominator, right? Degree of denominator is higher. Perfect. So, let's try to solve this question. Now, when you try to solve this question, what will you do? We'll factor out x square this time. So let me factor out x square here itself. So if I factor out x square, I get x square, and here I get 2 minus 1 over x square, correct? In the denominator, I'll factor out x square, and we are left with 5x minus 2 over. So we are divided by x square. So we are left with x here and minus 4 over x, correct? Now, since x is very large, 
first let me cancel out the x squares okay since x is very large these are negligible quantities correct and therefore we are left with let me just move on to this place so we are left with 2 in the numerator because 1 over x square is very small and in the denominator these two are very small we are left with 5 over x is that okay now as x approaches plus or minus infinity very large value if I put very large value in the denominator then what will happen to y? y will approach 0. Do you see that? So here again, horizontal asymptote exists, right? Because you are approaching a value. 0 is a value, correct? And the equation is y equals to 0. Perfect. You may approach from a different side. When you are approaching x from the positive side, you are approaching, you are positive, right? From positive side. When you approach negative infinity, you are actually approaching from the negative side for this particular example. Do you understand? That is how it is. And now let me summarize it for you. That in any rational function, there could be three conditions. One, degree of numerator is higher, second, than the denominator, second, degree of numerator is same as that of denominator, third, degree of numerator is lesser than the degree of denominator. So, in case 1, where degree of numerator is higher, we do not have any horizontal asymptote. Correct? Since as the function approaches infinity, x value, x value, as x approaches infinity, function also approaches infinity, large value. In the second case, where the degrees are same, then a horizontal asymptote will surely be there at y equals to ratio of leading coefficients always okay and that is how you get it and in case 3 where degree of numerator is lower than the degree of denominator in that case large value in the denominator will make the function approach 0 and so you approach 0 and horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0 Correct. I think now you must understand this and if there is a difficulty still, please come back to me and we'll try to do our best. Thank you.